afternoon. How y'all doing today? Anybody told you Jesus loves you? Yeah. Well, if you hadn't got told that, you hadn't been reading your Bible. Because he, he ought to be telling he loves you. Welcome to Treasure tonight. Uh, I got kind of a, it's all about me tonight. It's, 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 uh, it's confession and it, it's also a uh, testimony. So, have anybody ever drove through heaven? Anybody know anybody drove through heaven? In the prison ministry we go to, I run into a boy and he taught me how to, how to ride through heaven. He's been in prison 29 years. He gets out in probably six months. I told him, I said, you're going to look at a whole different world. There's nothing like it used to be. But this is the way you drive through heaven. Because we're going to be looking for Peter and Paul, John, all of them. Come on. Let's go to heaven. Come on. Come on, drive to heaven. Who sees Peter? Anybody see Peter? Yeah, how about Paul? How about Moses? Ah, uh, okay. All right, I want to teach you all that. This message is about me. It's, it's not really about anybody else. So don't leave here with your feelings hurt. Uh, I had a hard life growing up. Uh, when I was about eight or nine years old, uh, I was in the third grade, and I didn't know all the answers to the questions that was on the test. And a buddy of mine dropped his paper down so I could write on it to get the answers. Well, the teacher caught me, and she took me outside. And this is the first time I ever had any trouble. She took me outside, and she talked to me. And she, had, she got through talking to me. She gave me a paddle. And I think she hit me two or three times. But anyway, she told me, she said, as long as you keep doing what you're doing, you're never going to amount to anything. That's the way your life is going to go all the time if you keep doing that. And to me, she spoke a curse over me. And that bothered me. And it always bothered me for a long time. But as I started growing up and getting older and getting into different people and talking to different people, I got a bunch more people that didn't like me and said stuff to me. And, and, and what happens when that starts is you start building walls. And you just keep building walls. The more you get hurt, the more you build those walls because you can hide behind them. And the devil, still, he's steady telling you, I've got you. You're okay. Don't listen to what anybody else says. You just listen to me. And so if you go deep enough, you believe exactly what he says. So he takes you deeper. The next thing you know, it's, it's just one right after another. And you build another walls, another walls, another walls. Unforgiveness. Uh, there's, there's so many different walls, it's unreal. But the answer to that is, is Jesus. So let me pray for our going, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you today. Holy Spirit, put a cloud in here tonight, Father. The Holy Spirit, fall, fall on each one of us in here, Lord, tonight, that we may truly become your disciples and truly know you, Lord, the way you want us to know, Lord. Just pour out your Spirit in here tonight, Father. Lord, we thank you so much for what you're going to do and, and the word's going to be brought tonight. So we ask you in Jesus' name, ask for forgiveness for my sins, Lord, in Jesus' name. But the, the, uh, the walls, have all, all of them have different names because each time you get hurt, it's a different wall. And this is what happens. This is what happens to me. When I get hurt like that, I build a wall. I want to say on my heart, but I don't think my heart would hold all the walls that I had built. So it goes through your heart. And every time it goes through your heart, there's a dry spot there. It's a hardening. Now after every time you get hurt and you get a wall go through you, eventually your heart's going to become hardened, real hardened. But see, my Jesus, he carries a big old sledgehammer. And he can break hearts. But we've got to be willing. We've got to be willing to have our hearts broke. We've got to be willing to be his, his disciples. We've got to be willing to move forward. And like I said, on these walls, some of you may not believe this, but these walls are not walls. They're demons. They're demons. Amen. Take my word for it, they're demons. And they can come out. They got a class here on Monday night and on Thursday night to help get rid of it. Amen. And it's the men's class and the women's class. But those demons get active. And they keep talking to you and they keep telling you every time you get something different. Well, it's okay. You're safe. You're safe. Don't listen to what that guy up there is preaching about. You don't want to know nothing about that. He's lying to you. He's not telling you the truth. 
He's lying to you. You don't want to leave me. I take good care of you. Yeah, you do. You push dope on me and everything else you can put on me. You try to kill me. You try to steal, kill, and destroy from me. And ain't that just, it, it's, and it, that's true. That's John 10, 10. That's the top half of the verse. The second half of the verse is, I come to give you life and more, life and more abundantly. We're living in one of those two spots. We're either serving the devil or we're serving the Lord. You can't do both of them. There's no in-between ground. And if we just keep serving the devil, it just keeps taking you deeper and deeper and deeper. It looks like there's no end to it, but there is an end to it. You have to come to the point where you realize what's going on in your life. March the 10th of 1987 in Kilgore, Texas, at uh, Bethel Baptist Church, I truly become to know the Lord. But from, the time I, from that time back, I was into drugs. I sold drugs. I was into pornography. I was, in, I was into all kinds of different stuff. None of it was good. Not none of it was good. I went to Gillies for a solid year. I never missed a night. Not one night did I ever miss at Gillies. I would drink double shots of whiskey and chase it with a beer. And I'd leave there sometimes and I'd be so messed up I'd just lay in the parking lot out there in my seat. And as long as you stayed in the parking lot at Gillies, they wouldn't rest you. The cops wouldn't bother you. You could just stay there and sleep it off and drive off. So it, it just keeps getting different. And so the next thing I know, uh, the devil said, well, you know what? You're, you're a pretty good drinker. Let's see if you're a pretty good smoker. Yeah, 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 man. Oh, yeah. And it takes you that far. I was working in construction, and I found a, a, a mask that fits your face. And we arranged it with a hole on it where you could put a bowl on it. Some of you know what a bowl is. Some of you don't. But you could put that mask on and seal it and just go... Couldn't see nothing but a cloud for about 15 minutes. It just, yeah. And, and it, it, you, he keeps trying to get you to try something different all the, time. all the time. All the time. He never quits. He refuses to quit. But after I got saved, my pastor pl uh, played a joke on me. My I've, got a, I've got an equivalent for about a third grade education. I have a hard time reading. I have a hard time studying. I have a hard time reading the Bible. But I found some books that I could read. That opens it opens it up to me a little bit better. So I read those books a lot, and most of the books are by Kenneth Hagin. Yeah, Hagin. If you don't know him, get to know him. That was one fantastic man. He preached for seventy years. Went to uh, went to heaven in two thousand and three. But to get back to what I was doing, I lost my train of thought. How about that? What was that, Jim? Uh, yeah, yeah. See. See, it catches up with you after a while. But but anyway, anyway, he when I met Jesus, uh, I, I said my pastor played a trick on me. Uh, we started going over. First, first my wife started going over, and whenever she'd come home, I'd say, "What y'all talk about? I want to know what you're talking about. I want to know because I knew a little bit about the Bible." And she goes, "If you want to know, come go to church with me." No, no. So at that time, my youngest daughter came up to me one day and she said, Dad, you know what? I said, what you need, sweetie? She said, we really need to start going to church more. And I said, you know what? I believe you're right. Sunday morning came. I got up, got dressed, went over with her, met the pastor over. A young man is absolutely just burning on fire. I'm talking about burning on fire. He was leading 100 people to the Lord a year. And uh, he, he's a fantastic young preacher. So we started going to church. I worked offshore and I was gone. The Holy Spirit heard her. She went down and got saved. And when I come home, she said, oh, guess what? And I said, what? She said, I got saved while you were gone. I said, why didn't you wait and let me see it? Yeah, yeah. See how confused and mixed up I was? <laughs> but anyway, it, it was funny. And then when we lived, we lived in Pasadena. We got married and lived in Pasadena. And she had three kids, and I told all my smoke, smoking buddies, I said, now look, I love y'all, y'all my friends. I really appreciate y'all being around, talking to me, and helping me and everything. But my wife's got three kids, and I'm not having dope at the house. There's no way. Even when I sold dope, I would, not, I would make sure that not a kid got his hand on it. I'm old enough to make decisions for myself. Those kids are not. So anyway, uh, guess what? They never come back no more. No, well, they never come back around no more. I didn't have no drugs for them. I didn't have no beer. I didn't have no alcohol. Didn't have any of it. 
Well, that's your friends with your own drugs and dealing stuff. As long as you got it, you got a crowd. If you ain't got it, you better be part of the crowd somewhere else getting it. So they're not going to have anything to do with you. Uh, yeah. You know, I told you those those walls are spirits, and they are. They all got names. Uh, I'm gonna say something else. John ten ten says the, do, the, the, the the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, now here comes the good part. Uh, so maybe you're gonna think I'm crazy, and I probably am, but that's okay. Jesus got me in His arms anyway. Those spirits. The walls turn into the spirits, and they try to what? Steal, kill, and destroy you. Every bit of it, every bit of it, every bit of it works that way. And if you let him, he'll talk you into shooting yourself. If you let him, he'll talk you into killing yourself or killing somebody else. All these people running around killing everybody, that's nothing but the devil. That's all that is. It's nothing but spirits. We all have spirits. Every one of us. Every one of us has spirits. You can get clean, like I said, on Monday nights and on Thursday nights if you want to show up and get yourself in the position where you need to be. You can get clean from it. But until then, you're going to walk around with them. Uh, last week, I was reading the books by Kenneth Hagin, and I was uh, I read some really good books on faith. So I, I went in bed, I laid down, and I, I said, Lord, I, I'm tired of this. Uh, I'm tired of feeling unworthy, beat down, no good. I'm tired of going to church and, and things not happening at church like it should or like I think it should. You see, if it don't happen like I think it should, <clears throat> it's wrong. And then that's, that's not right. That's, that's not God. That's not the Holy Spirit. Excuse me a minute. So I was laying there and I started praying and I said, Lord, take these spirits from me. And he said, which one? And I said, doubt and unbelief and faith. So I started praying and then all of a sudden I started praying in tongues. And I kept praying in tongues and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm trying to throw up. Stuff is coming out of me. It's coming out of me. And it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. But a couple of nights later, in the, in the book I read from Hagar, he said that, that uh, when you when you go against the devil, he's going to come back on you harder than what you went against him. So a couple of nights later, I was in there praying again. And I went to sleep and I woke up and my arms felt like they were tied, but I could move my hands. That's the only thing I could move was my hands. And it felt like that I was being penetrated. And uh, so I started screaming, Jesus. And it quit and it went away. Uh, to me, I asked the Lord what that could be. And he said, I, he was trying to put cancer on you. And he told me he was trying to put cancer on you. See, I rebuked that. I, I'm not going to stand for that. I don't have COVID. I, some of you know I've been all over the United States. I've been to Mexico. I've been to Belize, Cambodia, and different places. I've never, never come down with COVID. And I'm not going to. Because I prayed and I said, Lord, I want a bloodline put between me and COVID. He can't cross it and I can't cross over there. And they had nothing. My wife hadn't had nothing. She hadn't had anything. Had Have you had anything? Okay, all right. Yeah. So, and, and it's, it's faith. It's faith that works. It, it really is. It's faith. He also said in the book that we, we, we have authority over the devil. And we need to put him under our feet. But that's, that's things that happen whenever you start going against him. Because he told me, he said, whenever you take authority over the devil, that's, that's, when, I, that's when it's going to really break loose. And you're going to have a lot to deal with. And since that time, I have been dealing with some stuff. But that's okay. He's still under my feet. 
He can't touch me. He can't harm me. Because I've drawn a bloodline between me and me and him. And I, I think that the Lord honors that. And I'm glad he does. So you, you can keep living like you're living. You can keep doing the things that you're doing. You can keep building walls, which is actually spirits. You can keep letting the spirits in, or you can stop them. The sickness, the pain, the misery, all comes with that. Sickness. On sickness, 3,000 years ago, when Jesus died on the cross, he defeated the devil openly right there. He is defeated right there. He said, it is finished. It's finished. But then he turned around and Instead, he went down to heaven, down to hell, and got the keys and went up and sat down at the right hand of his father. But he also said, by my stripes, you are healed. 3,000 years ago, you got healed. Our problem is, we've been in the world so much, we don't claim it. We don't believe it. We really don't. If people want to get healed, he's told you what to stand on. By my stripes, you are healed. By my stripes, you're healed. So you can, you can keep going the way you're going, or you can believe what the Word says. And if you don't believe that, you don't believe the Word. And that's it. It's in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. He tells you, it is finished. I defeated him openly. I plead my blood over y'all. I chose y'all. I give you, Jesus. God said, Jesus, I'm going to give you all the power and authority of heaven and earth. Give it to him, right? Yeah. Okay. And then Jesus said, no, I'm going to take it and I'm going to give it to the church. So I give authority over the earth and the church. What are we? Church. We're the church, right? Okay. Not one person sitting here has any more power than anybody does. We see how Alan does. We see what Preston does. See what Johnny did and he preached the other night. See what she does and everything. Nobody has any more power than what we do. Our problem is, most of us is too lazy to get in the Word and dig it out. And I'm not lying to you. you just, you're just, you got to get in there and get it. Am I right, Ken? Yeah. Yeah. But first you've got to get over the laziness part. And then you've got to ask God when you read the Bible, you go, well, you know what? I try to read the Bible and I try to read the Bible, but I just don't understand it. The reason you don't understand it is because you're not praying and saying, Father, this is your word. If you don't let me understand it when I stand before you, you can't hold me guilty because I've tried to read your word and I can't understand it, but I ask you to open it up for me so I can understand it. So I can understand the word. And he does. He, he's opened it up to me. He really has. And I, and I really appreciate what he's doing in my life. And I thank him so much for all that he has done in my life. Because he took me out of the pits of hell and put my feet on a rock. And I'm going to stay on that rock. I'm not going nowhere else. I'm going to stay on that rock. He told me not too long ago, he said, you come to my feet. You sit down at my feet and don't you move till I tell you to move. Don't you go anywhere till I tell you to go somewhere. Because when I tell you, it's going to be took care of. You're going to go do what I told you to do and you're going to come back. And you're going to sit back at my feet. And this is what we're going to do till I get you trained a little bit better. I need training. I need training by him. Uh, like I said, I have problems. I have problems with reading and stuff, but that's okay. The Holy Spirit is taking over and working in me and working with me, and I really enjoy what He does. I, I really enjoy what He does in my in my life. The other day, me and my wife was left here. We was going down the road out there, and I asked her. I said, "How many people you killed?" And she said, "A lot." I said, "Me too." Killed a lot of people. Killed a lot of people. A lot of us sitting in here has killed a lot of people. May not be afraid to admit it, but... Alright, this is James 3, verse 5. I'll give you time to turn there if you want to turn there. Alright. James 3, verse 5. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes great grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And I'm in the L, uh, New Living Testament. It may not, may not go like y'all's Bible does. I can understand this one. 
And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corruption, your entire body. You can't set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. So when I stand here and I start running people down, I'm killing them. Man, I'm killing them. And he's guilty. And I'm the only killer in here? Oh, come on. Oh, we've got some embarrassed people. Come on. But, instead of getting mad at somebody, you start speaking blessings over them. Yeah. You can put coals of heaping fire on their head. Yeah. So, why, why would we want to take a choice of just running somebody down all the time? Well, I don't like the way they did this. That's what I said over a while ago. If it don't, if it don't look right to me, it's wrong. That's, that's me. And the Lord's changing it. He, Melinda, He's changing me. But believe me, sis. It's getting it's all for the good. But like I said, why why does keep doing the same old thing over and over and over? Why do we keep living like it? It's because we've got too much world in us. We need more of Jesus and less of us. We need to die daily. The Lord needs to become stronger every day and stronger and stronger and stronger. Really, He does. And listen, I'm not like Alan or anybody else that preaches in here. I tell you the way I see it. I tell you the way the Lord puts it on my heart and the way the Lord tells me to see it. Uh, so, you know, I'm not the world's best preacher. I don't claim to be a preacher. I claim to be a child of God, and I'm under His authority, and I do what He asks me to do. And that's what I do. I asked Don the other day, I said, Don, do you mind if I get up and say something? And he said, no. He said, I'll get back in touch with you. Well, I had a message prepared, prepared tonight was... And uh, the Lord said, no, no, your heart ain't right to say that. You don't want to get up there and say that because you'll open up a can of worms and it'll be hard to close. So uh, I said, okay, Lord, if you, if you ain't going to let me speak this one, well, give me one. So he gave me tonight. I asked him to play the heart of worship because that's where our heart needs to be. I don't have a heart. My heart's in heaven with Jesus. That's where my heart's at. Because I told him, I said, Lord, take my heart. Take my heart, Lord, so I can, so I can understand. And, and I give you my heart. Do anything to me, Lord, that you need to do to me to keep me under your blessings and keep me under your feet. And he does. He does. We, we do a lot of work. We do a lot of cooking. I used to get aggravated about a bunch of that stuff, and he got me off to the side one day, and he said, all that stuff you're doing, you're doing it for the glory of yourself. When you stop, start doing it for me, I'll, I'll give you more. That's pretty hard to swallow yeah. But he's just telling it like it is. He's a loving, caring God. I'm going to speak very he directly cares about to me. you now. He wants me on the straight and narrow. He wants me doing what he wants me to do. And the only way I can do that is, is, is do what he tells me to do. I've got some other scripture I want. Oh, i got to, let's see. Let me read some more scripture. i got to. Okay, again in Proverbs, not Proverbs, yeah, Proverbs 18, 21, it says, The tongue can bring life or death to those who, who, who love to walk and reap the consequences. The tongue can bring death or life to those who would love to talk and reap, what the, I would say what they sow, consequences. Um, in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, in, in, in LT, It works. Mark, uh, wait a minute. Mark eleven twenty three. Let's move some mountains tonight. Y'all want to move some mountains? Yeah, okay. Let's move some mountains tonight. It says, "I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen.'" But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. How many mountains you got in your way? How many mountains? Yeah, how you get rid of them. He just told you right here how you get rid of them and what you do to it. You can, you can cast it into the sea. You can cast your mountain into the sea. You can cast your problems. You've got a problem. Cast it into the abyss. Instead, that's the seed. Cast it into the abyss. 
The devil don't like that either. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you receive it, it will be yours. And we're going down to Mark eleven twenty five. But when you are praying first, forgive one, forgive everyone. You are holding a grudge against, so that the Father, that your Father in heaven, will forgive your sins too. And I've already read John ten ten to you. And uh, here's another one in Romans 8, 10. This is going along with what I'm trying to say tonight. I know I'm going too fast, Miss Becca. <laughs> Romans 10, 8. You got it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> in fact, it says this message is the very close at hand. It is in... It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we have preached. But we've got to have faith. And Romans 10, 10, which is... For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confession with your mouth that you are saved. And... The reason um, I, I, went over it, I went too fast on something to go back to the go back to the the sickness in uh, Ephesians. Let me find it. I got it right here. Okay, in, in Ephesians six sixteen, which is the armor of God, it goes from chapter from twelve to eighteen, nineteen. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fired arrows of the devil. Some people call them darts. Where do you think your sickness comes from? Your problems, your problems, where do you think they come from? When the devil, when the walls change from the walls to the devil and he starts putting sickness on you, it's right here. About the fiery darts. He takes fiery darts. And I'm not crazy about that. When the devils come out, darts will come out with them too. If you tell them to, if you tell those darts they got to come out with them, they'll come out. I know you think I'm crazy because I get some worse looks than Alan's getting. Ugh. But anyway, it's true. Why do you think he'd give you a shield? To stop the fiery darts. Why? So, we can either accept those darts or we can get rid of them. When Alan does, when Alan does some deliverances, when those demons start coming out, they'll come out and they'll bring them with you if you tell them to. They will. You just got rid of the orphan spirit, right? He's happy. She's a whole lot better off than I've seen her in a long time. And I'm proud of her. She give you a hand. So, you know, like I said, you're sitting here with all this on you. Some of you are, some of you ain't. But if you want to get rid of it, how do you get rid of it? These altars. These altars are open. They've been open since I've been preaching, and I meant to tell you at the first of it, these altars are open. You're not going to bother me if you come down here and pray. You're going to make me happy to see some people come to the altars. Because that's where you'll find me the biggest part of the time. Is down on the altars, either laying down or praying. Because like I said, I want the Lord to work through me. I want my hands so clean that I can lay hands on people and they get healed. They receive everything the Lord wants them to have. They also, some of them even get slayed in the spirit. Ian's caught, caught with me before and he's caught quite a few people, me and him working together. Uh... He's a gracious guy sitting right there. But what do you want to do? You want to hang on to these? Or you want to you want to come down to the altar and pray? Or you just want to... What do you want to do? That, that, that's, up, that's up to y'all. You know, you know what your problems are. Every one of you sitting here knows what your problems are. You know what's holding you back. 
you know what's stopping you you know why you won't go down there well if i go down there and somebody sees me go down there they're gonna think i sin and i don't want nobody thinking i sin and you're walking all in it and you won't listen to what the lord said so you know some people don't go because they, they feel comfortable with what they got. They don't want to get rid of it. They like it. They like it. Hey, Johnny Green, how in the world are you doing, brother? And this is another guy I worked with many years ago. We built a church together. He was a pastor. Great guy. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, but anyway, what are you going to do? Live with it. No, I'm going to get rid of it. I want it gone. I don't want it in my life anymore. It has no power. It has no authority. It has no assignments on me. You know why? Greater is he that lives in me that lives in the world. So get under my feet. This Christ is in me, and I'm in Christ. I am a conqueror. I am a conqueror. Because I know, I know what to tell the devil. Get under my feet. Under my feet. No authority. Get under my feet. So, you know, uh, give you a chance to pray. If you want to pray, if you want to come to the altar, it's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, it's your choice. You don't want to have to live with it. I had, I had to live with mine, and it's not fun. And I felt so good. I felt so good. When I was carrying that load in my spirit that you couldn't see, my spirit's walking like this. And the more I carry, the more it goes down. The more it goes down until it either kills me or takes me one or two. But the minute Jesus steps in and says, No, son, that's got to go. It's going to go. I'm going to set you free. And he set me free and he took all that stuff off of me. I walk up right now. I'm not sick that much anymore. I feel pretty good every day when I get up because the first thing I do when I get out of bed is I go, thank you, Jesus, for this day. Lord, bless this day. Please, please put somebody in front of me that I can talk to, I can witness to, or I can pray with, or I can lay hands on them and see them healed. If you see me in the store walking around, I'm going to be I'm looking for people to pray with. My wife's done got used to me. She just goes off and leaves me. I'm over praying with people. So, and she's a prayer warrior herself. So if if you're on the prayer team and you want to come down here, come on down. We'll, we'll give everybody a chance to pray or come get laid hands on or whatever they want. So Don.